to go well, down a whole lot do. easier. I think yeah, that, it that certainly might be. does. Yeah, that might be too. So, yeah, and it's interesting, uh, you know, with a lot of meats, depending on what the meat is, you know, whether it's melamel or methylagin, it can it can really it's alcohol well. <laughs> So, yeah, that's uh, kind of what got us into home brewing um, with mead. And just there, uh, introducing our meads into different regional competitions until, you know, really people just started giving me, hey, where can you mead? Where can I buy it? And after we won some awards with our meads, it became distributors saying, hey, when are you going to bring this? Uh, oh, nice. When are you hmm. going to bring your mead? To the public. So That's sweet. Nothing but good problems to have. So you were getting distributor inquiries before you actually went pro? Yes, That's absolutely. Cool. Yeah. I mean, Jacksonville is kind of a neat area for that. Um, there are a ton. Our, our local home brewing club is over 2,000 members strong. Uh, and there, there are just a ton of different um, festivals and events in this town um, where a home brewer can can bring his his beers and his wines, ciders and meads, uh, and just let the general public try them out. And uh, um, so that really hasn't gone unnoticed by the people in Jacksonville. There's quite a bit of buzz that was going on early on about our needs about two or three years ago um, before we uh, completed and constructed on the new building. Um, and, yeah, just after winning some of the awards that we've won at, um, like, Astrofest here in Jacksonville or the Green Lion Festival, or even um, the world's, or the United States' oldest meat competition down at Mead Lenny, we started having distributors coming out of the woodwork with uh, Cavalier and J.J. Taylor uh, and r r Beverages out of Atlanta just saying, hey, when can we bring this to market? So... So we thought, okay, this is a good problem to have. How can we, how can we do this? How can we bring it um, into the marketplace and let people try it out? So That's pretty cool. Yeah, so that's what we did. We talked to our town. Um, we actually had a winery in Orange Park. Uh, talked to the director of economic development here in Orange Park, and he was eager to go ahead and have another uh, winery or meadery in the town. Um, but we didn't have a ton of money. We were just still sort of a cottage business uh, getting started. Uh, and we actually convinced the town to go ahead and let us build a separate building on our property or residential property. Um, so we're a production-only facility. Uh, we don't have a tap room. And I think that would probably disturb our neighbors a little too much to have people coming up and expecting you to drink <laughs> <laughs> at nine o'clock at night to the house. Um, but yeah, it's kind of kind of in reverse order of what a lot of meteries do, which is they'll find a uh, you know they'll find a uh, a retail location that they can open with a consume on premises license and uh, then serve their meads in house until they're ready to go into distribution. We're kind of going backwards. We're starting with distribution, seeing how well our meads do in the local and regional marketplace, uh, and then upscaling from there. So, so there's yeah. more than one way to go about it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, totally. And you'd be surprised mm -hmm. how many start out with, um, you know, a facility that is on their property or near their property, and mm -hmm. they're not open to the public at first so they're distributing whether it's self-distributing or through distributors you know, it depends on the state you know um, right that's but, correct <laughs> but quite a few of the meteries that i have met over the years have started out in their basement or the garage or the barn or you know right some, some, exactly yeah someplace like that so it's it's not at all uncommon to start at that space and I don't know. I think it's not a necessarily a bad thing, depending on you know where you're trying to get to and well where you're at geographically, you know. Exactly, and we've seen so many uh, different breweries and wineries that'll come in that are overcapitalized up front, um, without having their product out in the marketplace. They're taking a real risk, and at our age, we didn't want to expose ourselves to that much risk. We decided, you know. If we can get our needs out there, if people really do like them, then they'll continue to buy them. Uh, and that's nothing but a good problem to have, and we can upscale from there if we need to. Um, so right now we're looking at standing reorders for a key lime pie from our distributors in both 
uh, Georgia. We just had another shipment go out to the Atlanta market today, uh, and uh, with Cavalier here in Florida. Um, so we have standing reorders, and we're ready. Uh, we'll be ready to ship out our next batch um, the first week of October. So nice. So yeah. So mm-hmm, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask. Uh, you're in. You're in both the uh, your local and then the Jacksonville area market. Are you covering? Mm-hmm. All of Florida, or just parts of Florida? Um, right now, we are doing Florida North, which is basically from the Orlando market northwards, okay. uh, and west west to Tallahassee. Okay. Um, we will be opening up uh, South Florida market uh, as our production uh, amps up a little bit. We have another 450-gallon fermenter that we're going to be bringing online, hopefully this month. Uh, and at that point, we'll be able to take on the, uh, the extra counties in Florida. Um, and we're also um, going with R&R distribution out of Atlanta and Savannah, Georgia. So, uh, so we'll be supplying those markets as well. Okay. So, yeah, Atlanta and yeah. Savannah—that's a huge market. It is, yeah, and it, it makes us a little bit nervous, um, seeing that you know we're going to have to do some upscaling uh, here in the very near future. Yeah. Um, but it, <laughs> it's just a lesson in logistics for us. So. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> how, how how much product can we crank out of our brand new nine hundred square foot building? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh gosh, I'll, I'm going to be I'm going to be headed down your way with my uh, with my husband and my RV to pick up Manny, uh-huh. who lives in Miami. And okay. uh, and Hamish, who will have flown in from uh, Australia, because we're going to go down to the Keys, and um, yeah, so you know, it's not that far out of my way. To- Field trip, mm-hmm. uh huh. Yeah, I mean, I do uh-huh. have to across the state because we come down to nine ninety five, but still, you know. I, I- sure, if you're if you're going through ninety five, we're not too far you're from. Uh, we're away. about eight miles. Yeah, yeah, we're about eight miles. Oh, really? Um, from ninety five. Yeah, okay, fairly I can close. Do that, so. then. So no, the next mm-hmm. the next question is going to be: Do you have a place where I can where I can pull my big old truck and forty three foot RV to park while I'm checking the place out? <laughs> you know, if we can get big rigs in on our street uh, for pickup and drop off or distribution, oh, uh, okay. we can and definitely manage yeah. something. All right. Yeah, right. the hardest thing for us is going to be Manny Street, which is like like you know arm wide. It's ridiculously narrow in there, so we're still trying to figure that one out. But cool, that that would be that yeah. was uh, one of the things that we wanted to do was um was uh you know hit some eateries on the way down i I, every Mm -hmm. time i go out i like to do that and it's cool to know that you're out there and i'd like to stop by and i'll I'll, as i get closer we'll coordinate and put something together not a problem once again i just wanted to let uh, your people know that we do not have a tap room as such but we'd be happy to have you in for a tour sure yeah i yeah i would not expect to yeah to do like a public thing it just it would be the private press only kind of thing (laughs) not a problem (laughs) one of the the benefits one of the benefits of being with got mead so um, exactly Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Perhaps we'll set. Perhaps we'll have Manny contact you since he's down Miami way and uh, see about getting together with you to uh, do some tasting and some reviews for the site. I'm sure, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, you yeah. just call it a business time. meeting. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, well, that's fine. Uh, we'll just. We'll, he can either reach out to us or you can pass me his information. I'll reach out to him. Yeah, so I'll, I'll get fine. you guys connected. So. Um, okay. Sure. Yeah, we'll be good there, but yes, one of my minions will be contacting you. Nice. <laughs> You'll have your people talk to his people. Uh, yes, right. I'll there you go. Talk to your people. We'll do there you it. go. Uh, More the barriers. Yeah. Better so, work. Yeah, I know Manny. Sure. I know Manny will be up for it. So. <laughs> okay. He was actually up there. He tried one when we went up to Georgia uh, for a wedding mm-hmm. uh, a month or so ago, and so there's one up North Georgia that he went to while he was there. So that's pretty mm-hmm. cool. So. Um, you're yeah. coming out of the gate with your uh, key lime pie mead. Tell us a little bit about that one. That's correct. Yeah, it's a, technically a mellow methylgan, I guess you could say. Um, it's yeah. uh, citrus mel. Uh, sourced with right citrus mel. Um, um, BJCP definition, fruit mead with spices. Um, uh, but anyway, um, yeah, it's... Uh, it uh, has all the ingredients that you would normally find in a key lime pie. We use uh, locally sourced honey um, from right here in the region. Either we use orange blossom or gall berry, just depending on what's in season. Uh, and we add uh, Ceylon cinnamon. We add nice. bourbon quality uh, 
vanilla beans, we add allspice, uh, we have another couple of nice. tricks uh, that we add to the menu to bring about the crust flavor in it, um, but it's, uh, it's all honey. Um, we don't add any other adjuncts other than the spices, uh, and it's just absolutely fantastic. Um, it is a carbonated mead. We do put about two balls of carbonation on okay. um, So it's nice and light and effervescent, and uh, you really just can't say Florida without saying something as, uh, um, as defining as a, as a key lime pie product. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> if you like key lime pie, um, yeah, it, it's got that wonderful tart, sweet flavor, and if you like key lime pie, you definitely like it. Oh, yeah, I adore key lime so. pie. One of my, one yeah. of my uh, mm-hmm. girlfriends' is mom, or my girlfriend's aunt owned a shop down in the Panhandle, and um, they had a mm-hmm. condo down mm-hmm. there, and we used to go down and go to her auntie's shop, and her auntie made key lime pies. But the real, you know, mm. she was the one who taught me that, uh, you know, if, they're not the right color. They're not actually key lime, you know, because so many That's key lime correct. pies you get outside yeah. Florida are the wrong color, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, there's a green color, which yeah. is not correct. They're not, um, right? it's yeah, be a it's yellow color. Yeah, it's more of a cream yellow color. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're not using uh, Florida key lime juice in your key lime pie, if you're using that lime jello, it's, that won't cut it. Icky poo, yeah. <laughs> I actually, when, when I yeah, buy lime exactly. juice, I actually buy Florida key lime mm-hmm. juice because that's what I prefer. It's got a whole different flavor. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so. Deli and Joe's. We know it well. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's the one. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Love that mm-hmm. stuff. Makes the best yeah. limeade. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it uh and, uh, yeah, that just has that nice tart and sweet character to it. It is a dessert quality mead. Um, but, nice. you know, it comes in at 12.5%, so uh-huh. be careful when you drink it. Uh, it goes uh, <laughs> high to the top all well, even though it's in the standard AB, ABV range. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people that will beg me for a 16-ounce pour of it, and I just say, no. <laughs> <laughs> You hmm. can't do that. Five ounces, far more proper <laughs> at a time. Drink five ounces, see how you feel, have another yeah, right. <laughs> So, hmm. I know you said um, you but, guys were bottling yeah. in 750s, uh-huh. but are you also kegging it and putting it out to, like, uh, bars? and? We beers? are. Yeah, it's legal for us in Florida to go ahead and put it out in kegs. Um, so, cool. the biggest size container that we can use uh, is a sickle. Um, so we are putting it uh, in key kegs at this time. That's the most economical way that we found to put it in keg. Okay. Um, and those are fully recyclable um, kegs. Essentially, it's just like a mylar bag inside of a plastic keg shell. Uh, and when the different uh, vendors are finished with it, um, all they have to do uh, is stomp on it, flatten it, and put it in their recycle bin, and it's completely recyclable. Um, so we've been happy to bring those to market as well um, to give the opportunity to people to actually try it without, you know, investing in the 750 millimeter bottle for it. Um, and that way they can get a taste of it, see if they like it, uh, and then determine if they want to purchase a bottle at that time. Nice. So, yeah, so it's a great thing for, uh, you know, restaurants and bars to put on tap, and, and we try to promote that as much as we can, so. Okay, cool. So do you do a lot of experimentation mm-hmm. to fine-tune each of your recipes, or do you just make stuff and see how it comes out? Uh, no, we're constantly t- tinkering with our stuff. Um, you know, I take very careful notes. I'm a big believer and always have been in using paper log sheets to write everything down <laughs> that you do to a batch. Um, simply not from so much the aspects of making a mistake, but if you're working on a new recipe and something goes uh, really, really right, um, how crazy would that make you if you couldn't remember exactly what you did? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> to make Same reason I use paper myself. <laughs> exactly. Um, and so, yeah, we, we tinker with uh, things sometimes right up into the time of uh, packaging uh, just to get it right. Um, but, uh, yeah, typically we're always doing adjustments, doing test batches and little experiments to uh, to see how our needs are doing. So it's, it's almost intrinsic to the process. Really, really have to take careful 
and copious notes to be able to consistently reproduce it again and again and again and again and again. You have to do that. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, so.